Okay, the reason that we're getting together today is because I want to explain some things about the virtual volunteer visit. Now, you can do this in three ways. You can go to the ability that I've set up and I will send all the activities there and you will need to fill out a application and approval form, which will include your social security number and a copy of your driver's license back and front. Now this is for their protection because they have to protect their residents. And they also may ask you to go through a little bit of a volunteer training in that they'll tell you what steps to talk about, what to, what to do if somebody talks about um, uh, suicide and what you have to do. You have to report that right away back to them. So there are a few things that they may take you through training, but basically this purpose of the volunteer visit is to provide a visit with a senior person who is either in assisted living or in memory care or in long term. And you will visit with them and you get to know them, see the greet and meet, and then you'll take your notes and put them in the, in the soap context. And we will talk about that in a minute. So that's the first way you can do it. You can go through a facility that I've set up for you and you'll go through the process of uh, being approved and through their volunteer training and then you'll start your visits with them. The other way that you may do it is if that is not practical or you're in a different time zone or you have a, a, a set of people that you'd like to interview that are older but not in the facility, as long as that person is over 65 and not want a member of your immediate family, then you may also use them as a person that you would like to do virtual visits with. Now, having said that, if they are from your church and you wanna do a personal visit with them in person and wear a mask and, and follow the COVID uh, protocols, you certainly may do that. So those are the two ways that you can uh, complete this assignment and either way will be acceptable to me. Now let's go back and talk about the assignments altogether. And that is, first of all, the purpose of this assignment is give you an opportunity to do an assessment and a visit with somebody who you don't know as a family member. And also their purpose is that right now with COVID in place, people are very lonely and they are looking for people that will come in and volunteer virtually. So that's why we're doing it. And remember this, very important. The activities that you do with them or the visits that you do with them does not necessarily mean that you have to complete the activity that they chose. That's not the purpose. The purpose of this is for you to learn how to communicate well with an elderly person who might have some deficiencies or some memory loss and this will give you that experience. So remember, it's not to complete the activity. If you do that, that's great. That's wonderful. That's fine. I'm happy. That's wonderful. I'm happy I sent the step. But if you don't, don't worry about it. Or if in the middle of your visit, they say, I'm tired of doing these. Let's do something else when next time you visit. That's perfectly fine. This is stuff that happens in a facility when you're working with somebody. So that's perfectly fine. So please do not feel concerned about that. So you have two choices, do an internship, which will set up with a facility with you, or you can pick somebody who is over 65 and not an immediate member of your family. However, with both of these scenarios, what you have to do in your first assignment is do an assessment. So take one of the forms that is in your book or a form that you prefer or a form that you used in your company before and do an assessment with them on your first meet and greet. So you can do a meet and greet and get to know them, find out what they like, what they don't like, try to find out a little bit more about their skills, what are they capable of doing. And then at the end of that conversation, you're gonna go over the list that I sent you uh, about virtual visits. And in this list, I have a series of things that you can, can do with somebody. And I am willing to send to you some of these activities. So you're very welcome just to do chats with them and they can pick out a current subject that they wanna talk about and you do your follow-up visits with them on those subject matters. 
It can be about literature or poetry, or uh, they may decide, oh, well, let's do some journaling. Well, that's fine. We can send you the paper and they can start some journaling, or you can have questions that you want to ask them what, that they want to journal through. There's an example of that in your textbook of journaling. So you might want to pick up and use, use that particular one. Or they may want to just talk about favorite TV shows. I know one lady always wanted to talk about Dancing with the Stars and who did what on that show. And that's the conversation I had with her frequently. So don't worry about that. That is one option for you. Another one is to do jigsaw puzzles. And I will send you jigsaw puzzles related to what they can do. If they want one with 50 pieces or 25 pieces, we will send that in a little bag to them. And we're going to send you a copy of it so that you're both doing working on the same puzzle and talk about the puzzle that you're working on or I can't get this corner to fit or do you have any blue ones that go up on the left hand side here over here did you did, you know you just work with them you're going to do your puzzle they're going to do their puzzle and just enjoy the experience of doing it together okay then the other one can be crosswords or word searches and I will send samples of those so that you have the same crossword puzzle that you're working on and the same word searches that they're working on so you can say oh look I can't find the word for this one. And then you say, oh, count four uh, columns over and then go down four columns. Look at that at the word search. That starts with F. Let's look and see if we can find the word that needs to start with F. So you can help them verbally through it um, as you do the project. So don't worry about that. I will send you the equipment, but I need to know what needs to be sent. And um, then I have ceramic painting projects that they can do. I don't have too many sand painting projects, but I can send those if I can, can find some. If we have an interest, we'll find it and, and send you a copy, send them a copy. Adult coloring stuff, I can send that stuff out with pencils and erasers and sharpeners for you. And then the last group that I have kind of put together is um, planting a project. And if they want to do a small um, herb garden, for cooking, we'll send the seeds and the and the and the dirt and the the pots, and they can do that. Or if they want to do a forest bulb and do a spring plant, we'll send that, and they can watch it and you can talk about. It. And then as you go visit with them at different visits, continue to talk about gardening and stuff like that. Ask them to put in a stick and measure how far the plant has grown. Um, and um, then the other thing that they can also do, if there are any dead plants in the facility, or if they have a dead plant, talk about it and see if it needs to be trimmed back, see if it needs water, see if it's had too much water. You know, those are the type of things that you can do under the, the planting gardening section. Um, all these are just ideas for you to start conversations and continue conversations. And if they complete the project, that's great. Now, if you are in a facility, when we start this, I will have the activity director set up a time when she can get in with the residents, help them start their smart smartphone, or get them on a Zoom, or get them on their iPads and do FaceTime with you. So when we do that, after you get your person, we will set up a certain time when you, when the activity director can get into that room and set up the, the, the conversation with them, with, with, with you folks. So um, that will take a little bit of coordination and some of those hours they may ask. Some activity directors work from two, from Tuesdays to Saturdays, some from Sundays to Thursdays, and uh, mostly it will be during business hours. So many your calls may be done on, on uh, after a lunch, lunch period or early in the morning or later in the afternoon around 4.30 where they can go into those rooms and set up the conversations for you. And of course, uh, the whole purpose is on this first meeting, you're gonna do a meet and greet. And like I said, do the activity assessment and write it down by asking them the questions on, on that. Make it a social conversation where they're giving you answers and you just fill out what they give you. And then by the end of the conversation, you might tell them, well, these are some of the activities that we could do together. Uh, would you like to pick one? and then we'll send it out. And if they don't want to do that and they come up with a different idea, that's perfectly all right. I have one person that's going to help somebody with technical problems on how to work their phone. So if they've come up with an idea that they want to do and let's do, give me a call back and we'll talk about it and see how we can set it up. 
or maybe we'll have to go to another option. But we'll try to accommodate what they want to do. This is their time to have quality time, to have a quality experience with you, and for you to have a quality experience with them. That's the whole purpose of this whole thing. So then um, after they decide what group they're going to do, then you will make an effort to call them at least four or five times. Now, sometimes they may have a good long conversation with you and it might go 30, 40 minutes, but other times they may, you know, be done in 10, 15, 20 minutes and that's okay too. But just make sure that you have enough visits with them so that you can write out your soap notes and I'll talk about soap next and um, make some uh, assessments on how they're doing so that you have good communication with them. And you'll be surprised after you go through this experience how much you're going to find you'll do not, not use this not only with older people but with your family with your kids with your with your other relatives with the, your people at work because uh the soap is a very good method of really getting clear communication okay so you're going to do a couple of these visits and you can write them up in soap notes and then your soap notes just keep putting your soap notes into keep separate keep keep your keep your copy of course but keep putting them into discussion five. So anytime you get a chance to do a conversation and you're writing it up in a soap note, put it on the screen so that somebody says, oh, that was an interesting um, session that you had. And it was interesting how you resolved the problem or it was interesting how much progress they made. So we can re re, uh, support each other back in, in discussion five. But discussion five will be open from now until the end of our class session. And then on discussion 10, I want you to write up a summary of your experience. And hopefully when you write up that summary, you will also ask them what their experience was. Say, well, this last time I'm gonna be visiting with you for a while, or um, you know, you may choose to end up the session. Say, well, this is the last time that I can visit with you. I've enjoyed the experience. How did you enjoy it? What, was there anything that I could have done better? So we want to get some feedback on how it went for you and how, how you can um, uh, um, be validated or value that feedback so that you can make changes if you need to in, in your future communication. And uh, also during this time period, if you are working with an activity director and they're setting up things, we might ask them uh, when a project is finished to take a picture of the project. And if we have a release from their facility to take a picture of the resident, we might want to do that. Um, just so that we, um, so that you have some documentation that you could put into your, um, your home run portfolio for, um, for future job references. And you know, if, if, if they're willing to help, uh, send a picture and uh, talk a little bit video on, on what they did for you or what, what you did together and how it worked out. That would be fun. And I think it would be fun to share for those people who are willing to do that. So those are the three parts. You're gonna do a meet and greet. You're gonna start your visits and then you're gonna do a summary of, your, of, your, of all the visits together and say, okay, we started here. This was the progress that we went through. This was the problems that we overcome or this is a problem we couldn't overcome. And then just share how you felt about that experience, find out how they felt about that experience. So I hope that will be helpful for you in doing your visits. And then the last thing that I wanna talk about is how to do the SOAPs. Now SOAP stands for subjective, O stands for objective, A stands for assessment and P stands for problems or plans or progress that you want to make. So um, what this basically is, it's a method that all physical therapists, occupational therapists, recreational therapists, uh, speech therapists, horticultural therapists all use. So basically what we're doing here is we're dealing with how the human brain responds to people. And very often, the first thing will be subjective statements. And they might be, well, this is what I want to do. And they'll tell you all about what they want to do. And then usually, 
people start to think, well, uh, they sometimes will say, well, I got so good at this. And so then they'll start to explain what their fears are about doing it. And you usually get that information about the first couple paragraphs that they're talking to you because they want to be accepted, but they're not sure they'll be accepted. And so it becomes a matter of kind of letting them purge a little bit what their wants and needs are and what their fears are or what their anxiety is. And that's what we want to listen to very carefully. Then objectively, you're going to think, okay, this person can do this. I'm not sure that they can do this. I need to ask more questions about this problem that they have. So I'm objectively trying to organize how I can help them. And then the A part is your assessment. So you're going to take objective statements that you have gleaned from them, from the subjective things that they've said, and say, okay, how can I assess this? So it sounds to me like they really want to play bridge, but it also sounds like maybe they don't have enough confidence to do how difficult bridge is. So maybe I should suggest that we should do an easier game, like maybe gin rummy or regular gin, or maybe you may have come to the conclusion that, gee, they had a lot of repeat information. Maybe they do have the memory problem. Maybe I should try something easier like a game of old maid or go fish and we'll build up their confidence about their ability to play cards. So then the last thing P problems are they may not have the ability to play cards at the level that they want. So let's work back with just working with the deck. Let's make sure that they can hold the cards comfortably or do they need enlarged cards. And so I'm going to start now to make a plan. The plan will be that they'll have larger cards easier to hold, or we're going to start out doing a match game, a concentration game, where they can, I can see how well they can, can flip over the cards and, and remember them. Or, um, so that's the process that we, that we want to go through. So it's SOAP, stands for Subjective, Objective, Assessment, which is the combining of the subjective information that you have and the objective information to make an assessment of what they really can do or what we can make them successful at. And then finally, you're going to write out a little plan. Well, I think it would be best to start with this and I'm going to provide this uh, card game and we can do it together on Zoom or we're going to talk about other experiences that they've had playing cards. Uh, what do they mostly enjoy about cards? And so, so you're going to make a, a plan so that they, so that you can work with them. And um, probably cards game was probably not the best one because many of you, for me to give as an example, because for many of you, that will not be the way that you'll do it. You're probably going to have something a little bit physically more tactile and that you both can work on together because you may not have a Zoom opportunity. Although many people that are telling me, um, are passing out iPads so that people can actually, you can actually see and work with them. And they're actually doing FaceTime or they're doing dual on their um, phone. So I don't think that part will be so much of a problem, but please do read over in lesson three, um, the information that I gave you on soaps. It's all written down for you. And I did do an example of a gentleman who wanted to play music. So please read to that. He, he wanted to do it so bad, but he had so many problems. But you'll read through that and you'll see how I solved the problems with his inability to sit, sit up and hold a guitar, with his in inability to use his hands and function well by adding adaptive equipment. Those are all the things that we do as activity directors to help people be successful. So just um, off of my mind here, I will share one more example with you with doing uh, colored pencils. Um, I had a lady who came into my building, said that she wanted to do colored pencils. And I thought, okay, that's fine. We'll do colored pencils. And so um, we started her out and she said, well, gee, um, these are kind of, I can't blend as many colors. Can I have more pencils? So I said, right away, I knew, okay, she's really interested in that. I said, well, of course. 
so we went to um, buying her pencils that were like um, uh, not a little bit, they were a little bit thicker so that she could hold them better, but also they were in a, a triangle shape. So they had edges and they didn't turn in her hand and she did very well with them. And then we found out that she was also terminally ill. And one of the things that we did with her is that we suggested that if she could complete six pictures, we would give her her own art show. So that's what we did. And um, it was very successful. And she did live a little bit longer that what, when, than what we anticipated because she wanted to finish her six pictures. And she did get to see her artwork hung up before she passed away. So find out what the needs are and they're going to tell you subjectively, well, I'm terminally ill and I got a, I don't have very much time, but this is what I really like to do. And she told us what kind of pictures she wanted to draw. And then she told us what kind of equipment that she needed. So we were objectively able to solve those problems for her. We combined it in an assessment and then we set up that goal and plan that she would do six pictures. So it may take a couple of visits for you to get all of the soap notes that you need, but take as many soap notes, paint as much as you can. You're not going to do it in one session. Sometimes they're going to say, well, I'm too tired. I don't want to talk anymore. Or sometimes they're hesitant. And then you may not find out until your second visit with them what the real problem is. Because everybody wants to show a real good impression of themselves. And so sometimes they're a little bit hesitant to talk about their fears or their or their deficiencies. But when you can get them to that trust level and they will start to talk about it, then you start to record it in your soap notes and you're going to make some good progress with this person. So that is my little take on virtual volunteer visits. I want them to be successful, successful for all of you. So please do not feel that you have to finish the project or if they want to change projects, I will send out more stuff. And this is the way we will get this done. As you're working on this, give me calls. Tell me what the problems are. This is the first time we've set this up and done it. And we know it's not going to run perfectly smooth. Know that your assignment will not be graded on finishing the project. Your assignment will be graded on your soaps. And everything that you put in your soap is what you, what you experienced. So the questions, what you write in there will be correct. So remember, subjective, that's going to be stuff that they tell you. Objective is how you analyze what they told me, what, you, what they told you, and how you can help them implement it. So your assessment is combining those two um, pieces of information, the subjective and the, the objective, in an assessment, and then setting up a plan or the progress that you want to try to make with them. I want it to be a wonderful experience. Please. For those of you who need to have your um, person done in a facility or want it done in a facility, get your information to me so that I can pair you up and get you started. Do not worry about deadlines. We are just getting them set up and you're getting introduced to this now. And um, I hope to have everybody set up within the next 10 days so that you can start um, actually doing your visits by the fifth week. Um, hopefully you will get a chance to do a meet and greet and um, that will go well. As I said, please let me know how things are going so I can help you and we can get this done and make it a positive experience for you and your residents. All right, remember you have the two options. You can either go to a facility and I'll set it up for you or you can get a person on your own either through somebody that you met at church group who's over 65 or some other group that you're, or a neighbor or anywhere out of the community that you wanna, uh, that you can find this person that would be perfectly fine. But do an assess, do a regular activity assessment on them first as you do that meet and greet. You don't have to write it down all in front of them, but do write an assessment and send it to me. So I have a baseline of what this person is like or how, you, how we perceive them. And then we'll see how it goes along uh, when we do the visits, you may find that they're higher level or maybe they're lower level than what we thought. And the soap, the soap notes will help you determine how that, uh, how that happens. Okay, I want this to be a wonderful experience. 
and call me and let me know how it's working out and I'll be glad to help. All right. Bye. Talk to you later.